If you've got a Riverstone 39 RKFB like I do, you probably realize that you got some storage that is ample, but not real practical. Stick around, I've got an idea. Welcome back to OK Let's Go RV. My name is Scott and today I'm going to be talking about some storage that's available in the lower bath of this 39RK FB. As you probably already know if you own one of these, the 39RK FB has plenty of storage and they actually have some storage that you can't utilize all that well and it's right up there. So I'm about six feet tall and there is no way that I'm going to reach that and there's no way that this is good space for practical daily use. You need either a step stool or a ladder to get up to it. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I'm gonna give you my idea of what I'm gonna use it for. All right, as I said, you need a step stool or a ladder to get up to it. And here it is. It's pretty good space, actually. It would be good to use for like soft things, you know, maybe extra sheets, blankets, and things like that, that you don't need to get to on a regular basis. But other than that, I can't really find a practical use for it. It measures about 25 inches deep, 26 inches wide, and thir uh, 17 inches tall. So my idea is that I'm gonna install my Starlink router, my T-Mobile router, my Peplink Balance 20, and yeah, all my tech geeky things. The problem is, there's no power in here. Hmm, so let me show you how I solve that. So before I get to the power, let me show you some of the investigation I did to determine that I was gonna use this space for what I intend to use it for. So I had this already off here. And this is right below the washer and dryer. You can see there's already a network cable. So this network cable goes down to my Starlink router, which is installed in the basement. If you want to know how I installed Starlink in this unit, you can check the video link up above. So once I discovered that it was real easy to run a cable from here out into the garage, I figured, how am I going to get it up there? So I've got an inspection camera, and I ran the inspection camera up this uh, gap in the wall here. Uh, this wall is about, eh, it's got an air gap of about two and a half, maybe three inches. So I figured out that it's clear inside that wall all the way up. Now you do have to get around the plumbing that's in there, but otherwise it's a clear shot all the way up to there. And I can actually see the opposite side of this inside wall. That told me I could get network cables up there, but what about power? Well, let me show you what I did about power. Behind this TV, there's usually a grate here. I took the grate off. And this is the cavity right here that is open from below all the way up. And as you can see, it's actually a bit more than three inches, probably like five inches deep here. And it's wide open. Still, where do you get power? Well, down under here, I found this power outlet that wasn't being used. And as you can see, it has two cables going into it. So it's either the first one in the line feeding another outlet, or it's in the middle of the line. The nice thing is, is these are RV specific. And this particular one will allow you to put another 14-2 cable coming out on this side. Perfectly rated. It's rated to do that. It's a 15 amp circuit. There's not much running on the circuit. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of 14-2, run it from the back side in here, run it up and put the outlet inside that wall uh, or inside that cabinet up there. And I'll show you what I've got. I was able to purchase another outlet, same exact, almost the same exact one, off of Amazon. I'll put the links for that below. And then I got 15 feet of 14-2 cable and I got my uh, power tester to make sure I'll shut off that circuit breaker and um, test that circuit before I try to do anything. So what it's going to involve is I'll have to go up there and figure out where I'm going to put the hole for the outlet. I'll mark that off and then I'll put a small hole for the cable that I'm going to have go through. So let me go get that done and I'll show you the process along the way. 
All right, so let me make something kind of perfectly clear. I am not a licensed electrician, so if you're going to plan on doing this yourself and you're not comfortable, I would suggest you do hire an electrician. Um, I've been doing my own electrical work for a number of years. I uh, hang around with electricians, and I did go to trade school, and I was in electrical for trade school many, many years ago. So I know enough to be dangerous, but I know enough of what I'm doing, so I'm confident that I can get this done without getting myself in trouble. Okay, so because there's so much space in here, I'm thinking I'll probably end up putting a shelf in to put the equipment on. And I'm going to put maybe a shelf right about, I don't know, six or eight inches off the bottom of the cabinet. That way Ellen will be able to put some stuff under there. She'll have some storage not hitting up against the equipment. So I'm going to put the outlet up fairly high and then I'll put the network outlet right next to it. Now, nice advantage of putting the devices in here is that it's also a clear shot to the roof. So if I needed to put any external antennas, that would probably be something that could be easily accomplished. And the antenna cables would be fairly short. So for those in the know, um, obviously shorter cables, less attenuation, less dB loss, stronger signal. That may be something I want to consider in the future. As far as heat in here, I have been running the equipment in here already for about a month and I've had no heat issues. If it turns out to be a heat issue, I may just put a vented portion on this door, you know, slats like this. Uh, that would jig right out and then get the, you know, the appropriate vents for that if it turns out to be an issue. But that's more work than I really want to do. So yeah, that's the idea. So let me go mark up and see, cut some holes. Okay, so I've got the hole marked out. It's about three and a half by one and three quarters wide. And then you have to notch out for the uh, little mount clips that are on the outlet there. So I'm gonna do that with an oscillating uh, multi-tool because that's, this stuff is really, really thin. This will go through with no problem. I'll get that done and show you the finished product. All right, so that took about five minutes. It was very easy to do. Just couldn't get the camera in here at the same time with the saw because it's really tight in here. But this thing fits in there perfectly. There you go. I'll go take it to the next step now. All right, so I got one end done. Follow the instructions on the bag that it came in it has a QR code you can scan and bring you right to it and then basically you got to jam the wires onto these connectors there's a tool to do it but you can do it manually without the tool and then you break off one tab here and then use this and once you force this on it'll seat those wires really well clicks in place and there you go now I've just got to run the cable down the wall I just did it down here outside of that cabinet instead of doing it up there because just not enough room. All right, so I'll go do the next step now. All right, on to the next step. All right, staple that in there. That's gonna be a tight fit, but we'll staple it one way or another. And that should do it. Now I gotta connect this one up. Oh, gotta make sure the power's off. Ooh, there you go. All right, power is off. All right, I'm gonna open that up off camera and get it done. Okay, that one's done. That was a little tougher because they didn't leave enough service loop here, so kinda had to go up against this to press those in. Gonna put the top on now, and then we'll turn the circuit on and test. Okay, moment of truth. We'll throw that on. It did not pop, which means no shorts. We'll check down here first. Okay. Okay, all red there means we got power. Let's see what we got up here. So 
Okay. All in the right direction, too. All right. Oh, I gotta pop one hole for the network cable. All right, so got everything buttoned back up. Let's take a look. Here we go. Got the Starlink up here, got the Peplink and the T-Mobile, which has a 5G connection. So for the cable that goes down into the basement for Starlink, I put in this brush plate and then I put this outlet extender here so I can get three things plugged in anyhow. Has some USB ports, which are pretty handy. These are just floating around right now. Um, I'll put some Velcro on them to hold them steady while we're traveling. Ultimately, like I said earlier, I'll put up a shelf over here and then I'll mount them with Velcro up there and then we'll have this uh, base to for other storage and stuff like that. So already I have an idea for an improvement as well. That outlet is running off of the inverter, which means that when we are rolling down the road and have the inverter on, this stuff is going to be powered, but I don't need it to be. And I certainly don't want to come up here and unplug everything. So what I'm thinking of doing is recall the power is coming from here and going up that way i think what i'll do is i'll put a switch right here that way when it's time to travel i'll just switch it off and the other convenient thing is if i ever need to reset those you know you always got to reboot something i'll have that switch here and i can just on off and on it and power cycle everything at the same time all right so stick around for some final thoughts because i made a few discoveries along the way of this installation that you probably want to know about if you're going to attempt it yourself all right so the installation is done and i'm pretty pleased with that so i wanted to point out a few things that i discovered along the way that you might find interesting or at least important so you may have noticed that when i was referring to the circuit that i was extending i kept on calling it a 15 amp and i was using 14 2 wire but when i went over to the circuit breaker panel i threw a 20 amp breaker so that probably raised some concern turns out that that 20 amp breaker is actually the breaker that feeds the inverter coming out of the inverter is all 14 2 wire now that's depicted on this wiring diagram from the manufacturer but i didn't take that as gospel either Either. I went down in the basement here and I tracked down the inverter and I found the 20 amp cable that's going into the input side and then on the output side I found the 14 tube wires coming out into the junction boxes which are these two white boxes shown here. So that's the junction boxes that are depicted on the manufacturer's wiring diagram. So I confirmed that all the wire is 14.2, so I just simply extended 14.2, which was already there. All right, so that's the biggest thing I wanted to point out. If you don't feel comfortable doing your own electrical work, by all means, hire an electrician. If you are going to do it yourself, don't take my word for it. Do all your own research and due diligence to make sure you're doing it appropriately and correctly. So um, down below, there are a bunch of links to the um, tools and accessories that I use to do this installation. Of course, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want more content like this, please subscribe. And if you think somebody else will get value from this, please share it out to them. Thanks for watching. I got some more stuff in the works, so hopefully we'll get those out soon and you'll tune in to see them. Thanks for coming by. See you later. Take care.